Yo, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be highlighting a few resources that are good for hoarding and some are not good for hoarding. I'm going to be going through three. So the first one is wish stones. It is a good idea to hoard your wish stones. We don't get a lot of this. If you've watched my previous video, I have only accumulated 1000 total wish stones. I have spent 400. You really need to think about whether you want to spend your wish stones or not. Uh, like for example, do you need that unit? Is it going to help your account in the long run? Or is it just going to be for that one single content? You need a lot of uh, weigh-ins to see whether you need that unit and whether you need to summon for uh, that unit using wish stones or not. Or you can just get that unit uh, along the way from GR or something because you don't need that unit now, right? It is a good idea to hoard this stuff because the main reason it's very scarce and you don't get a lot of it. The next resource is the Ripple Out Box. If you have this one, this is the old Ripple Out Box where it can give you any unit um, that isn't Shimmer 5 Star and it, it gives you 5 Ripple Pieces. These two boxes, the new one which is going to give you one of uh, a certain type, these are very good to hoard. And the, the main reason is because you want to wait for the unit that is very significant for a specific resonance. For example, specific, uh, very huge impacting resonances are the first one is going to be Yun Chuan, R2, his other resonances are not needed. His R2 is very important, it is a make or break for his kit at R0 or uh, R2 or R1 or below. He is completely useless, he's only used for Fafnir but he's even just mid there. R2 Brewster, again, a make or break for the character. R0 Brewster is not really used like at all, pretty much. Maybe once, uh, maybe one or two contents is okay in, but R2 is where he becomes super powerful. That's where his uh, utility becomes insane because he can apply defense down before getting his turn. And that's why he's uh, very good at R2. R2 CJ is broken beyond belief in PvP. R0, he's still good, but he doesn't do that HP swap and AP swap thing. He swaps, he, he mirrors it, but he doesn't swap it. The swapping is what makes him super good. The next one is R2 Embla. If you're close to her R2 Embla, it's worth to use the Ripple Out Box to get her to R2 because the change from R0 to R2 is massive for Embla. She does insane amounts of damage. She becomes the, the best DPS, AoE DPS in the game. Like it, it doesn't even come close to uh, anyone else. R2 Embla is very good. The next one is R2 Ethan. The difference between R0 Ethan and R2 Ethan is massive. Uh, because of that speed he gives. In PvP, that 20 speed is going to help you a lot. Uh, if people try to outspeed you, that 20 speed is going to allow you to go first. Uh, paired with speed lead, you're going to get like at least like 45%, uh, sorry, 45 speed on each of your units, which is massive. R6 Sally is also a notable one. You, If you're close to her R6, then it's uh, also a good idea to use your ripple outbox on her. R6 Jin Yao is also a very good one. She becomes a straight counter to control comps and she's going to cycle her S3 very fast. The rest of the Espers, it's not good to use the Ripple Out boxes on them because it's either because they're already good at their base form or that uh, their resonances don't really add anything to them. So yeah, those are the few notable ones that you can use your Ripple Out box. So hoard the Ripple Out box until you get these units and you're close to their significant resonances. And now the final resource that even I am not using, utilizing at its best is the legendary ability mod. As you can see right here, I have 34 for whatever reason. I don't use them quite often as some people do. I am a hoarder after all, so you can see like a bunch of my resources unused, but this one is very detrimental for your account. If you don't use this resource, you're losing on a lot of power, so to speak, for your account that is essentially free, right? So the, the thing with Legendary Ability Mon is that I would advise you guys to not use it until you've reached mid to end game. Because when you're early to mid game, you don't really know what units are, are good and what units are worth Legendary Ability Mon. Every account is different. Every account is going to benefit 
differently from leg legendary ability mods. Like for example, if you're a PVE player, you should uh, spend your ability mods on PV PVE. If you're a PVP player, then uh, legendary ability mod is going to be more used on PVP players. You should at least hoard like uh, 12 to 24 of these legendary ability mods. You should have that all at all times. At least 12 because there is a scenario that when you pull in a new unit out of the blue that is very good and you want to legendary ability on it you can just give it right away because you have 12 remaining uh, but if you do use all of them when you pull a new unit like for example a Ch new C or Shuan pin out of the blue then you don't have any legendary ability mods to, to skill them up but uh, 34 is again way too much so don't use them as soon as you get them you need you should at least save up 12 because that's like the baseline for most characters that you need 12 to max them out i would advise not to go above 24 because it's gonna halt your progress for example i've only recently uh, skilled up my average i think last last month or two uh he was at zero skill ups for the longest time this is not my pvp setup by the way uh, but he's uh, at zero skill ups for the longest time but now i've given him ability mods he's doing way better he's doing way more damage he provides more damage mitigated mit mitigation effects he's actually doing something whereas before he really doesn't do anything because the damage mitigation is only t uh, 10 percent now it's at 20 percent and his damage is not enough to like do anything now let's go through some units that are worth legendary ability mod. Number one, Jin Yuyao. Once you get her to R2, it is very worth it to legendary ability mod her to max out her S, uh, S3 and S2. But before R2, I would advise you guys not to use legendary ability mods on her because she doesn't really offer much. Her AP push is only 20%, uh, which is not enough. Um, at R2, she gains 30%. And that's where she cycles a lot better. If you're a PvE player, I would advise to give Yun Chuan your legendary ability mod, at least for his S3, so that he can cycle the speed up way better. And aside from that, this is not really needed, but it does add to his DPS a little bit from 16% to 25% of ignore, def ignore defense that occurs every time an ally hits. That's pretty good. But uh, mostly his S3 so that he can cycle the speed up faster. The next one is Tricky so that you can have a 100% chance to trigger his uh, buff removal and also to get his cooldown reduced. And the next one is Hide. 100% Hide is a unit that requires skill ups but only when you have him at R4 or above. At R2, he's not really doing much for you. He's, this unit is a very stat hungry unit so he needs this node, third node and fourth node, uh, fifth node. But uh, fourth node is already good enough because he gains crit damage so he add, he adds up his defense uh, damage a lot more so you definitely want him to be at R4 before you start giving him skill ups because before that he's not really going to do much for you Gaius 100% give him skill ups and that's mainly because of his S3 reduces the cooldown of one for by one turn so that he can on every wave he can go into his uh, god king mode and then nuke and also because Gaius is super good so you want to get his uh, damage up as well. When he transform into the God King mode, he gets he gains a shit ton of damage from 120 to 150. Gabriel is also another unit that is a uh, very good to skill ups. You know you only need her S3 to be maxed out so that it becomes a four turn instead of five. Uh, and then her S2 only needs to be at level three so that you can have a higher chance of uh, inflicting the defense down. You don't need this. Uh, one turn cooldown because the cycle is still going to be the same this is still a four turn a four turn four turn uh cooldown is still going to have the same cycle of s3 s2 s1 s1 s3 s2 s1 sally if you have her at r6 i would uh definitely put uh skill ups on her because th then she can cycle her s3 and s2 a lot better she's going to constantly level your hp which is going to be very hard for the enemy to kill off one of your units unas of course skill him up so that his uh, AP push becomes a 3 turns so that you can cycle his skills a lot better 
even his S1 is also pretty good because the trigger chance increases to 60%. Lucas, if you do use him as your buff stripper, but keep in mind Lucas is a terrible buff stripper. He's only at 50% chance for 3 hits, which is uh, very low. But if you use him, definitely give him skill ups because he's gonna get a lot of benefit from it. He gains minus 2 cooldown on his S3 and also the trigger chance for his S2 increases uh, to 85%. Obviously, just give her, give her skill ups as soon as you pull her. Clara, I think only if you have her at R2, then you should give her skill ups because at R0, mostly you're gonna use her as an AP pusher anyways, not really as a healer in a tanky comps. Uh, but at R2, then she provides two turns of immunity, so that uh, minus one cooldown on her really helps her to cycle the immunity. Sienna, 100%. Once you get her at even R2, so, so that she can cycle the attack up and speed up better. At R2, she gains 3 turns. Um, and then she, you put her on Ocean Waves, she can actually just put this attack up and speed up at all times. Geb, R2, I would say he is very worth it. So uh, reduce this cooldown to one turn uh, by 1 turn. But before R2, I don't think he's worth it to skill ups. You can just use him without skill ups at R0, he works just fine. But at R2, you definitely want his uh, S3 to be up a lot more so that he can provide the speed to your team and the attack up to your team. Abigail, 100%. If you get her at R0 even, give her skill ups. Otherwise, the AP is not even 100% and the cooldown reduce is also very good on her. This skill is also very good. You want both of her skills to be maxed out because this is on a 5 turn cooldown. If you have this one skilled up, it's going to go down to 4 turns. Um, well, this is 5 turns and that's not going to be good for her cycle because then she's going to start with S3, S2, S1, S1, S3 and then her S2 is not up. So you want her S2 to be up at 4 turns. Ashley is also a unit that you should skill up so that she can cycle her S3 better. The Rainbow Bridge stack is very powerful and you want her to have this up uh, uh, as soon as possible. Embla is a unit that you don't need to skill up but I do give her skill up because I want her uh, defense down to be increased by 80%. But the reason why you don't need to skill up Embla is because her damage mainly comes from the Corrupted Seed and not from her skills. So you don't need any skill ups on her because her S1 can also provide this uh, Corrupted Seed. And of course, Shren Pin, give her skill ups as soon as you get her. She's the same thing, um, the AP goes up to 100% from, what, 50% AP? And you definitely want to reduce her cooldown as much as possible. My Legendary Billimon, since I have 34, I am going to give it to Camille. One thing is because Camille is going to be a Judicator in the next event. But more so than that, I am going to be using her as a part of my cleave team once I get her to R6. So I want this skill to be maxed out. I don't really care about this skill being maxed out because once again, like I said, Fortins on S2 is not really that important because once you get this one to Fortins, her cycle is still going to be the same. So hopefully we get everything onto the S3. If we get unlucky and everything went to the S1, I'll just recycle or rewind her. Almost maxed out her S3. Okay, this is actually perfect. Um, I don't need this one to be skilled up because her S3 is already skilled up. So I've saved three skill ups on Camille, which is very good. I don't need to skill up this one. The cycle is still going to be the same. Two more weeks and I can get her to R6. But yeah, that's about it. Ciao.